the Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next home loan, Geneva's got the programs and the products. You just need to make the call, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. And every day at this time, OBMMI, they provide the most comprehensive, accurate, timely, and interactive analysis of pricing ever conducted in the mortgage industry, calculated from actual locked rates with consumers across 35% of all mortgage transactions nationwide. Let's take a look and see what mortgage rates did on Friday. Good morning, Bobby Joe. Glad to have you with us. Let's see what Nate, let's see what the uh, mortgage rates did on Friday. 30-year conventional loans locked 6.5%. 30-year jumbo loans locked 6.775. FHA loans, 30-year locked 6.349. 30-year VA loans locked 5.93, best loan on the market for our veterans who don't want to put any money down. And the USDA loan, that's generally no down payment in the rural areas, 6.32. All of those were down on Friday. We'll see what happens today. We never know what the day will bring. But remember, those are the actual locked rates. Those are not, uh, they don't tell us APR, points paid, points received. They just give us the locked rate, and that's what you're going to put in your mortgage calculator. If you don't have one, ronismylender.com, ronismylender.com. We've got a great mobile app, and if you want to apply, you can do it on there as well, but you can see what rates are doing. You can play with uh, uh, payments, all of that. If you want our commentary each morning on what the markets are doing and what our thoughts are, rsrmarketminute.com, rsrmarketminute.com. You can check that out as well, free of charge to you. But let's see what's going on in the markets this morning as we check out this bright and sunny day. Let's see where we are. We've got the, uh, let's go back and we'll take a look as we always do at the S&P 500. Now it's up 11 and a half points. We'll look and see the 10-year treasury down two basis points, 3.92 we'll call it. I'm not going to go into all the decimals. And we've got the mortgage-backed securities. Those are up six basis points. Remember, as we share with you all the time, when the bond goes up, rates go down. When you're up six basis points, it really doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. So we're not going to even get too excited about that. But what are we watching today to see what's going on in the market? Well, let's take a look. Once again, we've got we've, our Federal Reserve. And you know my thinking about what's going on with the Federal Reserve for a significantly long time. Such an idiot. Yeah, 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 Such yeah. Such an that's idiot. That's right. I, that's my thoughts about the Federal Reserve. Some people don't share that thought. It is mine. Fed governor and voting member Michelle Bowman spoke over the weekend and showed how out of touch she is with the economy. Of course, she's not an economist. Huh. 19 members of the Fed, 12 of them vote, and they're dealing with monetary policy and economics and looking at inflation and unemployment, yet we've got non-economists making some of these decisions. Worse, we've got an attorney making these decisions. Uh, I got a bad feeling about absolutely. this. Absolutely. Here's some of the comments, uh, notable thoughts from her commentary. PCE and PCE core at 2.5 and 2.6% respectively are uncomfortably high above their 2% goal. Huh, let's think about that one. Well, where were we? We were at, of course, under the Biden administration and Biden and Harris administration. We were up over 9%. Now we're looking at these numbers and they're at 2.5, 2.6. think we're doing pretty good there, Michelle. Maybe you ought to check that one out. Oh, no, no, we're going to wait until it's at 2. And we know that there's always a lag. So why would we want to get ahead of this? Inflation has made a lot of progress, and the current readings are not that far above their target. Additionally, the trajectory is lower. Unemployment rate, while higher, is still historically low at 4.3%. Well, Ms. Bowman, let's think about this one. So she misses it here again, as it's not necessarily about absolute level of unemployment, but rather the relative change. It has risen 0.9% from the cycle low in April 2023, at 3.4. Let's see, 0 0.9, 3.4. So are we saying that that's up about 30% since 1948? Anytime we've seen the unemployment rate by, rate rise by this amount, we have seen a recession. 100% of the time, 
Are you listening, Ms. Bowman? The unemployment rate, while higher, is still historically low, 4.3. Unemployment rate is overstating the weakness in the labor market. She tries to say the unemployment rate is overstating the cooler, the cooling of the labor market, but then goes on to say that QCEW census data shows that the BLS has been overstating the job growth by a large sum. Where have we heard that one before? Surprise, surprise, surprise. If anything, the unemployment rate is likely understating the weakness in the labor market. She directly contradicts herself with this statement. Next one. Housing data in the BLS jobs report is less accurate because of response rates. It's true that the response rate in both the Bureau of Business and Household Surveys have fa- fallen. But the business survey, where the headline jobs figures come from, has seen a massive decline from the national 60% to 43%. Meanwhile, the household survey, where the unemployment rate comes from, has fallen but still remains at 70%. The household survey is also much better at capturing inflection points in the labor market, which we are clearly seeing. Housing services, that's shelter. Inflation may rise because of immigration. Bowman is missing that rental prices have and should continue to moderate for several reasons. Seasonally, we always see them moderate at this time. There is a record amount of multifamily units being completed and vacant multifamily units being re- re- completed. Hmm. Vacancy rates have risen sharply higher. Additionally, there is a massive lag from when shelter rises or falls and when it is reflected in the inflation reports. This is why the Fed waiting too long the hike rates in 2021. And why are they behind the curve right now? Even if we saw shelter costs rise right now, it would be delayed by about 18 months before it showed up in the CPI and the PCE, although we think that shelter costs will fall, not rise. To that point on rent, Zillow just released their observed rent index, showing that rents rose 0.4% in June, moderating from 0.6% in May. Year-over-year rental increases are at 3.4%, well below the 5.2% increase in CPI. This still has a lot of catching up to do, and it appears we have finally turned the corner in shelter and should see it be easier to make progress on inflation. Unemployment rate was impacted by Hurricane hurricane Barrel, and it's temporary. The BLS has clearly stated that Hurricane Barrel had no discernible, discernible effect on the national employment and unemployment data for July, unquote. Unbelievable. She didn't know these things. Further supporting this is the fact that job sectors that we be impacted by leisure and leisure hospitality both, both saw job increases, not decreases. Interesting to see Fed members like Bowman continue to think that the Fed needs to be cautious on cutting rates, especially when looking at the Fed's own statement back in March. At the March meeting earlier this year, the Fed released their Summary of economic projections, which showed that they believed the unemployment rate would reach 4% this year. And the core PCE would be at 2.6. With those projections, the Fed forecasted 75 basis points of cuts this year. Fast forward to today, the unemployment rate is at 4.3, above their 4% projection. And core PCE is at 2.6. The unemployment rate is much weaker than projected. Inflation is where they expected. So why would the Fed not be cutting rates by at least 75 basis points this year? Producer price index is coming out tomorrow morning. That's going to be the start of some of the inflation numbers that we're going to see. We'll be watching that one for you as well this year. Um, headline is expected to this this year over year headline is expected to decrease from 2.6 to 2.3, while the core is expected to decelerate from 3 to 2.7 if these numbers are reported as expected. It should be bond friendly. That means rates should get a little bit better. Therefore, if we see some friendly PPI numbers tomorrow, it bodes well for the PCE report, which is released on August 30th. That's the Mortgage Minute brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next home loan, Geneva's got the programs and the products. You just need to make the call, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. 